Okay, today we are still on general equilibrium. Okay, we'll be talking about allocative efficiency today, and we're almost at the end of microeconomics. Okay, after this we'll be transiting into macroeconomics, and I hope that it has been a great journey for you guys. Okay, uh, for the first half of the intro to econs uh, unit. Okay, and I hope that Quickonomics managed to make it easier for you guys. Okay, so let's continue to do this. Okay, for the rest of the unit. Okay, and we will finish this off with a bang, right? Okay, so. Allocative efficiency. Okay, there's some things I would like you guys to think about. Okay, do you remember that we talked about you know the government frowning at monopolists? Okay, uh, and we remember saying that monopolists are inefficient, and there's this thing called dead mid loss, and we do not know why it's dead mid loss. Okay, so what does it mean? Uh, what what's the big deal about it? Okay, so this is the thing that we're gonna cover today. Okay, we're gonna cover about uh, allocative inefficiency. Okay, and the big deal about the deal weight loss. Okay, so let's start our little tutorial by talking about some comparison tools that we will need. Okay, so we have got assumptions, okay, to, to make. Okay, the, we have got two cases. Case one, okay, there are three markets, okay, and all the markets, okay, market for good X, market for good Y, and the market for labor. They are all perfectly competitive. That means they do not make profits above normal, right? They are all efficient. Okay. For case number two, we have three. We have three markets also. Okay. Um, market X, market Y, and market for labor. Okay. Market X is a monopolized market. Okay. Y and labor are all competitive. Okay. So that's all we need to know first. Now, these are the tools that we will need. All right. We will need to know how to draw the PPF. Okay, it's very simple. We just need to draw the PPF. Okay, we need to know how to put the price line. Okay, or the budget line, and we know how to put our indifference curve in. Okay, your PPF is is really like your budget constraint in chapter two. Okay, it behaves the same way along with the indifference curve. Okay, you will need a price versus quantity graph, alright, to analyze uh, how markets behave. Um, a monopoly and a and a competitive firm, how would they behave differently? And we also need to know the gradients of the PPF, this line over here, and the price line. Okay, the indifference curve, not so important. <coughs> but the most important parts, okay, you need to know how to calculate the the um, the gradient for the PPF and the price line. Okay? Alright. So let's talk about the slope of the price line first. Okay, how do we calculate this? Okay, I hope that you find this diagram very uh, familiar. Okay, so we have real income in terms of uh, X and real income in terms of Y. Okay, and that's our indifference curve over here. Okay, so this gradient of this budget constraint, this price line is indicated here. And we just got to take the vertical distance divided by the horizontal distance. So we get the following math. Okay, I0 over PY0 divided by I0 over PX0. Okay, you just flip this guy around and it becomes multiplied. Then you can cancel these two people out and you will get px not over py not okay so that's the slope of the price line okay easy easy all right okay now we're going to talk about something that's a little bit more complex okay but don't worry you will get it for sure i guarantee you okay now marginal cost okay we know that it is equals to wages divided by the marginal product of labor so what is the marginal product of labor it is uh, how much product one labor can produce okay so we take the wages divided by that figure we get marginal cost okay um, that's the formula alright then in a perfect competition okay the firm will produce at P just give me a second Let me cancel this out we don't really need this okay in a perfect competitive firm they will produce at P equals to MC so P also equals to W over the marginal product of labor. Okay, so we have got this scenario for both X and Y, assuming that both markets are perfectly competitive. We have got the price of X equals to the marginal cost of X, which is equal to the wages divided by the marginal product labor of X. Same for Y. We have the price of Y. Okay, because it is competitive, it will be equal to the marginal cost of Y, which is also equal to the wages divided by the marginal product labor of Y. You will realize that this W and this W here will be the same. Why is it the same? 
because the labor market is perfectly competitive. Okay, everybody is paid the same wages. All right. Now, let's talk about the slope of the PPF. Okay, so the slope of the PPF is basically a tangent over here. All right, we draw a tangent to the slope. Okay, and you will realize that this will be the price line as well if we are in uh, a, 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 an economy where X, Y, and labor are perfectly competitive. Okay, so here, the change in Y is equals to the change in labor multiplied by the marginal product of labor for Y. Okay, now, why is this so? Okay, let me break it down slowly for you. So the change in Y basically means how much Y, how much more Y do I get? Okay, or lose. Okay, if I were to change uh, the allocation of my resources. See, as I move along this PPF over here, you know, let's say if I move from here to here, I'll be producing lesser Y and more X. So I want to know how much lesser Y, how much, how much of less Y, yeah, how much of Y do I lose you know, if I were to produce more X. So that is my change in Y over here. D is change, right? So I need to take the change in labor multiplied by the marginal product of labor of y because uh, I do not know exactly how much is going to be lost okay so I need to take the total amount of labor that I've taken away from the production of y multiply by how much one worker can produce that will give me my change in y makes sense right and that will be the same for x as well so if I'm gonna take dy divided by dx this is very familiar right it's like the slope of a line uh, yeah, the greener of a line. So I'm just going to take this divided by this, and because this is the same as this, I'm going to cancel that away. Okay, and the slope of the PPF is simply this: marginal product of labor for y margin divided by the marginal product of labor for x. Okay, so that is the slope of the PPF. Okay, so if all markets are competitive, okay, all markets are competitive, what we get is this. Okay, so we have PX over PY, okay, which is the slope of the price line. And remember, if you break that down into marginal cost, okay, it will be equals to W uh, wages divided by marginal product labor of X divided by wages over the marginal product labor of Y because this is MC, this is MC, right? Okay, so we're gonna simplify that. We're gonna cancel away the W because they are the same. So we get this. Okay, then to simplify it even further. Okay, we have this. Okay, initially it was divide, but when I turn this guy around, it becomes multiply. So I get this here, and you realize that this is the same as the slope of the PPF. So if the slope of the PPF is the same as the slope of, uh, sorry, the slope of the price line is equals to the slope of the PPF. So what we have is essentially this here. The slope of the PPF is calculated by drawing a tangent on that particular point. And this tangent also happens to be the price line because the gradients are the same. Okay, and what does society do? Society, what they do is they will put the indifference curve tangent to that point. Okay, and this is where they are maximizing their utility. So, okay, the society is maximizing their utility. And society is also maximizing its resources because when they are on the PPF, they are productively efficient okay so in this case okay the the, the economy all right okay they are all the markets all right they are productively efficient as well as allocatively efficient okay we will come back to this graph soon okay as you re as you can realize the amount of x produced okay is denoted by x pc because this is the quantity produced by a perfectly competitive firm that goes the same for y as well but now we're only concerned about x because the next case that we're talking about is when Market X is monopolized. Okay, so what if Market X was monopolized? Okay, we know that the monopolist produces at P more than MC, and in the case of Market X, it will be the price of X more than MCX. Okay, now take a look at this. So now we know that the price line is going to be more than MCX over MCY because the numerator is bigger than this guy's numerator so naturally this whole thing becomes bigger than this whole thing okay and then you just apply the, the math okay it's the same way okay convert them all into wages over marginal product labor of x over wages over marginal product labor of y you will get this over here so your price line is bigger than your p 
PPF, the gradient of the PPF. So that means the price line is steeper than the, the PPF, the gradient of the PPF. Okay, so the next thing we need to know is, okay, okay this anyway, this is the proof, okay, that the, that the produce at P more than MC, right? This is where the monopolies will produce, okay, and this is the price, and that is more than MC. Okay, and then you will notice that the monopolies will produce lesser than a, than a perfect home, right? Okay, we all know that. Okay, so going back to this graph, okay, we know that the perfect, the monopolies will produce lesser than the perfect com. So we're going to put our new point somewhere here, X, M. Yeah, we'll just call it X, M. Okay, so now we're going to draw the price line, okay, when there is a monopolist. Okay, so we're going to bring this guy up, okay, to touch the PPF. Okay, because monopolies are not, or com perfect, perfectly competitive or not, they are all uh, what you call uh, L productively efficient. So they always lie on the PPF. <coughs> so we know that the slope of the PPF is going to be a tangent like this, right? Okay, but the thing is that the price line is not going to be this because it is steeper than the PPF. So what happens is that we are going to make it steeper, something like this. Okay, and we're going to draw it like that. Okay, and here we have got PX not a uh, PX over PY, and PX over here is the monopolist price. Okay, now we're just going to add in our indifference curve. Okay, so the society is going to be at this point. Okay, but the indifference curve is like this. They are still maximizing their utility. Okay, but it's not the highest. The indifference curve is not the highest. So when now, as you can see, that they are in a lower indifference curve. We have moved from this indifference curve over down to this indifference curve over here. So what is this? What, is, what does this translate to? This translates to a loss in utility. Okay, and this is also equivalent to the dead weight loss. Okay, so this is why the, the dead weight loss is such a big deal. And this is why governments frown at monopolies, is because the society experiences a loss in utility. Okay, so this as you can see, we only took like about 10 minutes to go through. Okay, uh, you can use this question, uh, you can use this 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 uh, technique, okay, to answer questions such as explain the inefficiency of the monopolist, or explain dead weight loss. Or uh, there are some questions that even go like uh, in an economy where all markets are, are competitive, okay, uh, utility is maximized, or something like that. Okay, so. This is a very useful concept. Okay, it is also good. Okay, when you go on to other other further units uh, on the cons. Okay, so yeah, I hope that you learn much from this. And thanks for watching.